Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Ignite Your Heart and Soul right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Deborah St. Hilaire. We're going to be talking about a lot of beautiful things today. Self-nurturing, feminine strength, forming rituals. Her whole platform is my body, mind, and spirit, how we can bring it all together. She says, women have been gathering in circles since the beginning of time. The world has changed. We're confused about our future, the future of our children, the well-being of our friends and family. We feel alone and isolated, lacking the time and energy to form new bonds. We can't go out. We're unable to get a host to get together in person. Why? This is why my body, mind, and spirit, her body, mind, and spirit was founded. We all need to feel safe and heard and appreciated. With those basic needs met, we are free to work on ourselves and our relationships. And that is the place of the opportunity and the tool for your expansion in your personal cocoon, enjoying your metamorphosis. She also has a wonderful book that has come out, Devaluation, the Evolution of the Revolution of the Diva. Love it. We're going to be talking about that book as well, her mission to unite women with one voice and that we discover our individual passion and purpose and achieve our balanced happy lives that we know unconditional love and that we are collectively practicing judgment-free acceptance and that we work together for equal pay and global human rights you are so talking my language girl <laughs> <laughs> i know that's why we get along so exactly well. exactly <laughs> um we are all a little confused right now, you know, yes. the coming out of the cocoon right now with certain places opening up and other places still, is it safe? There's still another variant out there. And, and, and for so many people that have been kind of behind locked doors for so long, it's like coming out, you know, is there a jungle out there? It's like after the Armageddon, the coming out is the world still there, you know? And the, but the roles have changed in life. You know, many things have happened in this last 15, 16 months. Um, we couldn't sustain that what was normal because it was dysfunctional. And we have to look to what we can do now. And so we're actually in a wonderful stage of exploration, aren't we? And wonderment. Yes. And yes putting forth what we really want to see and not accepting that old status quo. Exactly. You know, and that's exactly what we have to focus on individually and collectively about what changed for the good. Mm -hmm. How has this made us evolve? You know, it's, I, I look around and I see more dads actively involved yes. in, in bringing up their children. Um, they're not afraid to go places with them by themselves anymore. Right. Yes. And oh my gosh, I love that. Even at the hardware store, I was the other day, there were so many dads, not only with sons, but with daughters. And I applaud that. I think that's just such a gigantic step for all of us in our evolutionary process. And moms are like jumping up and down saying, yes, maybe we'll get a chance to read and, and do our makeup for longer than five minutes and close the door when we go to the bathroom and all that. All those wonderful luxuries, <laughs> which you don't realize are a luxury until you either have yes. a pet or a kid. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So and we, we cannot dwell on what went wrong, really. No because none of that matters anymore. Mm. Moving forward is what matters. And how has it changed you? Take, take a look at that. I think it's really important to, to evaluate where you are and where you wanna go. How are you gonna continue this evolution in spite of what yeah. is going? Cause we don't know. We don't know what's on the other side of this. No. So go into it thoughtfully and intentionally and on purpose, the way that you want to go into it. 
with the right intent. That is the big deal. You know, this past 16 months has been a great time for reflection. And it's been a great time for us to really view, review life and humanity as a whole. Yes. And understand that we do need to come together. You know, we're not meant to be alone. We're not meant to raise our kids alone. It is the village, right? It is the extended family. It is the, the, uh, the family. And of course, the husband, my daughter's just had a baby. Her husband is fantastic. He is the co-parent. It's not like, you know, she, he's had to go to work, back to work now. But what they're doing is scheduling when he can do it to relieve her, you know. And so it is you both made this baby it's both of your jobs and right. it's great to see that stepping up yes. and taking it seriously in the same reflection we're seeing other people stepping up and taking their lives more seriously their purpose more seriously looking at it and going oh god i was just on this treadmill of corporate and really in reflection i didn't enjoy it so right. what do I enjoy and what can I do that really is more serving to everyone? So it's been a real gift of reflection for those that haven't been on the front line and working like dogs for us, you know, right. bless them, bless and them. Bless them is um, right. yes. Because, you know, now it's their turn to, to have, take that time and reflect because they kept us going completely. Uh, but yeah, it is, it's been a fantastic time for that. And I'm, I'm loving the different atmosphere and the different changes and the different perceptions that are going on out there. We need to nurture them, don't we? Mm, we don't want mm -hmm. them just to be a fly in the night and go back to the old status quo. No, we need to nurture those changes. You know, and it's funny that it took a virus mm -hmm. to unite us globally, but it really brought us to a level playing field, no matter where you were, what economic status you were. It, it didn't matter that virus was prevalent among everybody. So let's get a sense of equality from yes. that and not yes. let it go. Let's, you know, if we get, get nothing else from that, let's grasp onto that and hold onto it for dear life mm -hmm. because that has been a major dividing factor. Yes. And it, it shouldn't be. We're all the same. We can all get the same virus, we can all get mm. the same whatever. Yeah. So we are the same. Every country is in economic stress now. Yes. Every country yes. is going to have to recover financially. Every country is going to have to rethink their practices. And, you know, it's not cutting back on, on the welfare. It's not cutting back on the support of the parents that need it. It's cutting back on the wars, you know, on the warmongering <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and all the other stuff that is out there that is, is a waste of money because it promotes death and not life. We've right. had so much loss of life in this last 15 months that it's, we, we value life differently now. And no, we don't want another war where you're going to send us off to die. We've had our death fill up to here. Yes. We want love and life now. Support that leaders. Otherwise get the hell out of here. Right, right. You know, one of my favorite sayings, and I think I've said this to you before, is um, by Dr. Wayne Dyer. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. 100%. So now what an opportunity to shift that. Yes. And let's do it. Why yeah. not? There's nothing stopping us now. Of any time in recent history that has shown us that the, the time to change has never been more obvious than, than right now. You know, so so let's do what it takes to come together to to put aside those differences because none of that makes a difference, does it? No. In the big picture, no. It doesn't. No. No. Um, last week I had a wonderful musician on, um, and she's written a song of um, uh, "Hug a Million Times." Oh, and I it, love that. And and you know we're at that phase right now. We want a hug. You know, we just want the love, and we just want the camaraderie. We want the conversation. We want the community. We want to be there with each other again in laughter and in joy, and exploration. You know, that's where our energy is, and that's where it needs to continue to be. Right. Right. You know, I I really focus on bring bringing women together because we really can be the biggest change makers. We the way we the raise shit. our children. <laughs> yeah. You know, the things, even the things that we say to our significant others, mm -hmm. 
even if they don't agree with us, it gives them something to think about. Yeah. And perhaps in time, they will change the way they look at things. But that's all we can hope for. Seed, but, you know, seed. <laughs> Water. Those men have, you know, they have changed too. I just, I don't know if you um, recently saw Deepak Chopra and Alicia Keys doing that, um, getting in touch with your feminine no, Meditation. I didn't see that. It has that been so beautiful. Mm. I have, and what a perfect time mm. for that. You know, it's time to get rid of the competition and the comparison, and the judgment, uh. and the, all that yes. BS, yes. and start embracing the feminine in each other mm -hmm. because we all have it. But we even, women even had to put aside our feminine when we first entered um, corporate America. We had right. to wear pantsuit and pantsuits and and be more masculine and be more aggressive when that's really not the way that we are no it's against our and, nature isn't it yes yes and so now now is the time like deepak chopra said it's time to embrace the feminine in everybody mm -hmm. that nurturing side that seeing the beauty that um positive it's positive and it's giving and it's it's not competitive and it's soft yes you know and it doesn't mean that you let people being soft does not mean that you let yeah. people walk all over you it means that you're true to your convictions you know what they are you know what you stand for and what you believe and you limit your contact with people that aren't like that you want to be around your vibe tribe Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And people that are in that same vibration where we're, we're wanting to uplift each other, we're wanting to celebrate each other, nurture each other. Your success is my success, vice versa. Yes. You know, yes. it's not about I'm better than you uh, comparing or uh, competing. We've seen what that leads to. And it, yes. nobody yes. wins. Yes. No one wins. There's right. far too many losers in that game. And judgment, you know, yet you what's the you not judge the be judged in return it's like why are you pointing a finger at someone you there's three pointing back at you where's That's your accountability exactly. right yes if we could step up on our own accountability our own responsibility but also in our own self-discovery of what our meaningful purpose is and bring that to the table in joy and enthusiasm we realize we are part of the solution the equation that and that's exactly where we should focus yes yes Full Don't blasting keep lights and on the problem. It. No, no, we know what the problem is. It's what, right. how, how do we get yeah. out of it? You know, and, <laughs> and, and we have to be willing uh, to change that mindset. Yes. Right. That's, that's an old programming that needs to be deleted because it's not work. Many others, but yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we may have had a pandemic out there. We're now going to look at the pandemic going on in our own system. <laughs> Get it out. Get it out. Delete. That is not a bad thing for that. <laughs> Wish was so easy, but it can be if we're willing to yes. go through the process, right? right? You've got to be willing that this isn't like, oh, I okay, I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to be all positive and hunky dory now. No, you have to go into the viruses that are laying deep in your old programming that are in your wounded heart, and you have to be willing to face them and release them yes. so that you can Without blame. No blame, no shame, right? Just deal with it. Deal yes. with it and let it go. Yes, yes. Yeah, because, you know, we, I often, um, one of the, hard, wait, let me start all over again. I get too excited. One <laughs> of the hardest things to learn was for me as a, as a coach was that I can't help everybody. Right. But if you are willing to get rid of those subconscious memes, those learned behaviors that have been holding you down and limiting where you're going, gosh, even limiting really who you are, yeah. let alone who you're going who you want to become, then I can. But if those, if you are so attached to that blame and that those old well, I'm like this because my mother's like this. Mm. Bullshit. Yes. You know, that's, it's bullshit because you don't have to be like that because your mother was like that. Right. Nobody in my family ever did this. Even genetically, they've found out that that's not true anymore. That, that your 
there's 5% of diseases that are caused by your her, her, hereditary genes. Mm-hmm. 5%. Right. Look, look how many sick people there are. Yes. Why? Why in a world of so much healing opportunity do we have so much sickness? And that's because of the dis-ease. People are disconnected from themselves. They're dysfunctional um, because they're trying to live up to somebody else's expectation or trying to live up to, to something, an illusion, and they're discongrobulated. Uh, so in that dis-ease, that's when the body starts exactly. coming into play. Like you know, if the brain is, is out of whack, it's the system that runs your body. So if right. it's out of sync, it's your body's out of sync. If you're living in anxiety all the time, it's in your stomach, it's in your DNA, you know, it gets right into your genes there. That starts causing everything else to break down. Right. So much of our illness out there is anxiety and fear and fear of anxiety and, and that horrible circle right. that goes on and on and on. Right. And the human body is not meant to hang on to animosity and fear and and judgment it's for when things were simpler we let that go and moved on to the next thing you know one of the reasons i think i do what i do is because um i when i was growing up my mother had a bunch of sisters and they all worked together on the weekends they owned a catering company and they would get mad at each other and throw something down and walk out of the room and come back 20 minutes later laughing about it, you know? And so I thought that's how women treated each other. Mm, Not so much. (laughs) And it was, I realized differently in seventh grade, this is when I really start, this is how long this has been a part of me. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't, I couldn't do a cartwheel. My dad used to say I was butt heavy, but, um, and so I didn't make the cheer. Bootylicious, darling. Booty yeah, licious. thank you. Oh, I feel so much better now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all those girls that I thought were my friends weren't because they made the cheerleading squad and I didn't. Mm-hmm. And I watched the whole rest of my life. And I, I'm going to tell you, that was really a long time ago. <laughs> like back in the stone age but i watched how women i remember those stones together. remember we had to rub them together to make fire yeah that was i remember and those days carve in our tablets to... <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that young and i think it's even happening younger now mm-hmm. and that's why it's so important that we as as a sex as a as a that that we get together and change that you know we We need to raise girls. And I think it's happening now. I think it's finally happening where girls are not put into certain roles from the time that you can only play with dolls. You can't play with airplanes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, And and that, that is so major. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they don't have to go through those things that we went through where you had to sit pretty in your Easter dress Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> and yeah, be seen and not heard. But the boys could go out and play with with the trucks and stuff. Yeah, they could come you back know? muddy and it's okay. God yeah, forbid we should get about. anything on our dress. <laughs> right. right, and those you know, and so many of the women our age and even younger have um, th- that still in their mind. Yeah, a friend of mine once said. Um, she was totally different in front of guys than she was just with me. She was super smart. It was when I was in real estate. She knew real estate law and procedure inside out. Yet as soon as there was a man in the room, she dumbed down. And I watched for a while thinking, is it just me that's seeing that? And and one day somebody said something to me, is Prisca really, I cut that out. Is she really not that smart? And I said, no, she's really smart. And they went, oh, and I asked her why. And you know what she said? Because my mother taught me that boys don't like smart girls. Yeah. Yes. Now we all know that that's changed now. Well, you know, the thing is, if a guy's intimidated by a smart woman, it's not on her, it's on him. Exactly. Right. So, you know, if we thrown the ball back in their court. And say, and I'm not. Want him, then? Sorry? Who would want him? 
if he was well yeah exactly if you can't appreciate the whole of me the all of me if you can't celebrate my own successes my own achievement um and it makes you feel small or it makes you feel insignificant that's an issue you have to deal with that's on you what's what's holding you back what's what's your uh systemic problem that's in there that you're carrying it's the same way putting people down to make yourself feel bigger and better is your problem it's not the person you're putting down it's you the person and we that's have to down. learn that because when yeah. people put us down mm -hmm. we have to understand that it has nothing to do with us or who we are it has to do with them 100%. because sometimes that can be painful until you really get that through your head that it doesn't matter. It's their problem, not yours. You get your feeling. I got my feelings hurt a lot. Yes. Until I finally realized, I do I really want to be with them anyway? Do right. I really want to be around people like that? No. Yes. Why am I bending myself into a pretzel, breaking my back, trying to be everything they want me to be at the cost of myself? Right. Right. right? You know, boy, that, that, that was a hard lesson. That was a damn hard lesson that I had to learn. And it was one that took a while to learn. Um, but when I learned it, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> no more. It was like a light bulb. Oh, it was neon <laughs> light, baby. <laughs> it really was. And, and it was like, what have I been doing all my life? Well, you know, what we have to understand is, you know, our generation, that's the way we were brought up. And then we've had liberations and then more liberations and more liberations. And it's slowly chipping away at thousands of years of misogyny, yeah. yes. right? So, yeah. you know, we're not going to do this overnight. Uh, you know, in the 60s, we burnt our bra. In the 70s, we wore the man suit, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, you know, um, you're seeing more yeah. and more, you know, um, places where women are that used to be dominated by men. But of course, what we're seeing is these poor women are being abused one way or the other because the men feel intimidated and they feel like they have a right right and uh we need to re-educate them that no and how are we going to educate them our own standing and our own standards and say no i will not accept that behavior right right and you know you can't really blame a lot of them either i mean no, it's the way they're brought up it's what right. they know Right. But, and I always say this, you know, there comes a time in your life. I even said this to my son not too long ago. There comes a time in your life where it doesn't matter how you were brought up. It doesn't matter who said what, when mm -hmm. it, what matters is right now and how you want to be right. and how you intend on evolving. Mm -hmm. And it, another thing, I love Wayne Dyer, I but another too. thing that Great he to always me. says that I quote quite frequently is, it's not the wake that drives the boat. Mm -hmm. You know, that stream behind the boat looks mighty powerful, yeah. but that's what's left behind. Yes. Yeah. So oh. the captain is the one steering where it wants to go. And that's uncharted territory. That can be any place you want. That can be any direction you want. You can choose to grow however you want. You yeah. just place that intention and head in that direction. You know, looking at that stream behind us, why can it not be the propelling force to push us forward? It can be, that's true, yes. And still it leaves that powerful garbage behind it. That's exactly. very true. Thank you very much. Right. That's, yes. Yep. I, you know, that's, I think, um, I was watching entertainment tonight for a moment last night and, and you know, talking about end of the Cardassians uh, and, uh, you know, the, a new series of the Housewives of. And, you know, look at all of that. And it's like, what do they dwell on? <laughs> bitch fest, bitch fest, bitch fest, you know, and it's, you know, I'm sorry, it is what it is. And it's like, you know, who's had more plastic surgery? Who's wearing more expensive clothes? Who's ready to tear somebody else down? And this is not the example that we want to have. And, you know, there, there's the whole controversy over The Bachelor on racism and now on sexism. And they're realizing if they want to stay in business, they have to change yes. the way they do the practice. So the more and more we say outrage, no, we're not going to accept this anymore. The status quo has to go, well, if I want to still be in business, we have to change. Well, even look at Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. They're getting rid of the angels. 
<laughs> right? Well, it's about bloody time. <laughs> These scantily dressed women coming down with big feathers, you know, and that's, yes. yeah, yeah. I mean, what, make a whole what is TV that for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? What? I put yeah. I put angel wings on once and nobody looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be scantily clad, darling. Oh, oh, they <laughs> and don't forget you had to oil your legs and your body so they shine. <laughs> yes. Did not eat for a month. But you know, <laughs> yeah. but the good thing is that we can we can change these things. Look at look at organic food. Mm -hmm. I remember um, it being a little tiny section in the grocery store. And even before that, you had to go to the health food store to get, to get um, chia seeds, for goodness yes. sake, something that you can buy any place now. And we made that happen. Mm -hmm. We made that happen. Our, we turned away from cow's milk. Mm -hmm. Now, look, we have so many choices. Yes. We don't want hormones in our chicken or our beef. We don't want them to have um, antibiotics shot into them. Mm -hmm. Everything is changing now. There's so many non-GMO products right. now. And they are displayed prominently and proudly that they're non-GMO. Yeah. And that was not the case only a few years ago. Not very long ago at all. I was actually on a non-GMO march. <laughs> you know, and it was, um, do you realize what you're putting in your body? And it's, uh, this is going to change the chemistry of your body, right? And this is going to ignite an awful lot of diseases in there, especially if you have a weakened system. Yeah, the change comes about through the consumerism and through the demand. And if we demand better, we get better. Otherwise, we're not going to buy. And we have to realize yeah. our, our purse, our wallet is the power. Yes. Amen. And that's the truth. Who you really, know, when it comes to everyday purchases, carries that wallet? Women. Yes. Right? We now, go if, grocery shopping. That's right. Exactly. We even make the decisions about what cars to purchase. Yep. It doesn't look like it, but we do. And the house that we buy. And the house. Yeah. And, yes. Yep. And the laundry soap and the washer and dryer and <laughs> everything. Yes. Everything. Right yes. down to the dishwashing soap and the carrot on the plate. So stop That's listening why it's to us. all up to us. Yes. It's up to us to not let our children eat um, processed foods. Right. It's up to us to make restaurants give us healthier alternatives. Yes. You know, Which we're seeing because of that demand, yes. right? Yes, yes. I mean, even the fast does. food places, they're offering vegan options and they're offering yeah. more salads Gluten and healthy free. food, except yes. McDonald's. They're still way, way behind. <laughs> Not in, even anything vegetarian then, of mine vegan. But, you know, they realize if they want to stay in business, they've got to cater to today's clientele. And today's clientele are saying no GMO, no additives, you know, and I don't want to eat meat. And also we don't need to eat meat because you're like beyond meat and all those other plant-based meats taste so much like meat. If you want the meat texture, you can have it. It actually tastes really good. My daughter and her husband are vegan and I've had some incredible vegan meals. And it's like, I really wouldn't know the difference. The texture and the taste is there, but it's healthier. And mm -hmm. so there's, there's many ways that we can go about. One of the things is we've got to be open-minded. Mm -hmm. Right. Just because it was just because mom and dad did it that way doesn't mean we have to. Right. If we you know, we know that, you know, a pound of lard on a piece of toast is not healthy for us. And that's what my my mom grew up on a farm and they used to sell the butter. Right. But they would have the lard on toast. Yes. yes. I remember know, having it at boarding school. It's <laughs> different than our lard. You yeah. Know, the way that they eat their their meat was unadulterated. Yes. Their yes. butter was like from a farm and the eggs were like one step away instead of seven, yeah. you know? So even if we do eat like them, we think in our heads we're eating like them. We're really not. No. Unless you are really, um, really conscious about where you're, per like we, we get um, grass fed and finished beef from a farmer. Mm -hmm. We know where that's coming from. Right. We don't eat as near as much meat as my mm -hmm. parents used to eat, but right. we still eat meat. Um, but, you know, only 
there's not very much of your daily intake that needs to come from protein. But did anybody growing up, did anybody ever tell you that there was protein in peas? Right. You thought right. that I thought for a long time that the only protein you could get was from meat. Well, who do you think told us that? The meat industry. Right. And, and let's look at some of the biggest animals in the world. What did they eat? Plants. Exactly. Right. Uh, and in a, we were brought up in a very meat and potatoes, you know, type of environment. And I, almost veggies were the enemy. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, yeah, you made a face when you were eating Ew, but, Brussels sprouts. Yes. I love like Brussels. <laughs> I, I'm a six veggie a night person. You know? <laughs> I love my veggie. You can take the meat. Don't touch my veggies. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also seeing now, you know, such a beautiful fusion of food in restaurants. Yes. Isn't and that the of the Asian and the Eastern and the Western and everything coming together. And it's just, it's enticing to our taste buds. And so we become more exploratory. I live yes. with an almost 88 year old who's very, very limited in her taste buds. And when it came to the lockdown, we could only eat on patios. We couldn't go inside restaurants. That meant the restaurants that we normally go to that she likes, we couldn't go to. So I took her to other restaurants and we discovered foods that she could actually eat. Oh, this is nice. So opened up her world world you know compared to we've got to be willing to open up our world and explore and you know you put something in your mouth and go, mm, I don't know try two or three mouthfuls it's right. only because it's foreign to the taste buds right yes. As everything we do it's foreign to us it doesn't mean it's bad it just right. means it's going to take you a few moments to get used to it before it becomes something that you're familiar with right so persevere with it yes my husband, I lived in California for many years, and so I learned how to cook Southwest. Well, I grew up Midwest. Mm -hmm. We didn't know how to put those flavors together. And I think the, the closest thing to an Asian dinner that I had had, well, besides going out, was um, uh, in a can. You know, and now I know how to cook all those things. Yes. My husband grew up in a very traditional um, meat and potatoes family. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he's not quite sure. You're right. So I know exactly what you mean until he tastes it a few times and then he really likes it. But isn't that true about everything, everything. you know, about life in general? Yes. And, you know, I... People always say, get out of your comfort zone. I think mm. you should always be comfortable. I think you should just keep expanding it. Yes. Yeah, make something, um, a, you know, don't be afraid of trying something new. Just make it part of your norm. Right. You know, part of your repertoire, right? right. So yeah, a musician doesn't just play one number over and over again. You know, they may use the same instrument, but they try different ways of playing it for another right. tune, right? Right. And how different the same song can sound yes. played by different instruments. Yes. Or different people. Yeah. Yes. Different interpretations, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, opening up our spirit. I mean, you know, this, this show is called Ignite Your Heart and Soul. And I'm a firm believer that if your heart is closed off, you can't listen to your soul. You can't listen to that wonderful divine message, that wisdom that wants to come through the heart. We have, I think, become so jaded over the last few decades um, and so afraid to open up our hearts. We have such fear of being hurt again that, no, I'd rather just keep my heart closed. Well, then you're a robot. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you're a walking dead because part of life is pain. Mm -hmm. But it's also going through the pain and becoming stronger and more courageous and having more abilities because of it. Mm -hmm. So we can't avoid it, can we? We've yeah. just got to be willing to go through it. Right. And we have to give purpose to it. So many yes. Um, you know, it is hard when you're in the middle of it. Mm, yeah, I know. It is very hard and it's hard to see yourself on the other side of the bridge. And so many times that's where a coach comes in, you know, and, and I'm, I'm the person so often that puts out the hand mm -hmm. and just shows what steps to take, whether you're going to take them or not is up to you, mm -hmm. whether you're willing to look back on the other side of that bridge and see how you've grown, right? the lessons that you've learned, 
even if it's um, through a relationship, now you know what to look for mm -hmm. and what not to, you know, red flags are a lot easier to see once you're aware that they even exist. Mm -hmm. And so they're all steps in, in the direction of where you're supposed to be because you were supposed to be there. Yeah. And yeah. you just can't question it. You just have to, that's, that's life. Make the best of it. And the only way to make the best of it is to continue to grow. You know, something that I, I discovered, um, I was all caught up in that corporate America thing. And, and um, I had to do this and I had to do that. And I had deadlines and blah, blah, blah. And um, I, all of a sudden I wasn't happy. And I couldn't figure out what the heck was wrong with me. I had a lot mm -hmm. materialistically. But I hadn't read, I hadn't prayed, mm. I hadn't meditated, I hadn't painted. I, so my left side of the brain was like in overdrive and my right side, which is the divine feminine side, was just laying there. Yeah. And until you're going to have I, time for me. Right. And until I started using that, which that side I feel is the side that relates to your heart and your gut too. Mm -hmm. If yes. you if you are not in tuned with the, your gar, gut, your gut, that's a new <laughs> name for heart and gut combined. Exactly. Good one. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> then then your your feminine cannot express itself, nor can it figure out what the heck's wrong. Right. So it it was as easy as coloring in my journal. Mm -hmm. that made me realize well it's all about balance yes and when you find that balance when you nurture those three parts body mind and spirit mm -hmm. and you you spend time on all them so yeah exercise mm -hmm. yeah eat right but also meditate pray do whatever you do to keep in touch with your spiritual side read, um, color, paint, go for walks in the woods and, and feel the beauty. And most of all, be grateful oh boy, because yeah. that's what brings everything together. If you live in gratitude, then your life is full. Mm -hmm. you know? It's not, and, it's not what you've not got. It's what you do have. Right. And, and let's be grateful right. for what we do have, you know, and, and I think, again, this pandemic has been one to show us that, you know, when people started off and, ah, ah, you know, the pandemic, I can't go outside. And I go, okay, are there any bombs dropping on you? No. <laughs> are there any Nazis at the door, you know, trying to take you away? No. Uh, you know, is anybody trying to interrogate you? You know, no. Then you've been given the luxury of staying home and having time with yourself and your family to get to know each other better and really put yourselves back on track. Now, again, this doesn't go around, you know, to the frontline workers who worked out there willy nilly uh, through thick and thin for us. As I said, it's their turn now, but they gave us that gift. Mm -hmm. And it's like, let's put things into perspectives, right? You've been given the gift of reflection, of family, of time, of rewriting you're, you're repainting your canvas of what you want to have so yeah. there's always something to be grateful for we've just Even got to look for it the sky yeah or the fluffy cloud there's yes. always something That's yeah all. yes and nature is just such a wonderful way of reminding you about life you know the the rustle of the leaves you know, in the wind and the, the gentleness of the breeze of the, the shore kissing, the water kissing the shore, you know, children laughing, puppy dogs chasing balls and sticks. <laughs> right. You know, it's if it can't open up your heart, if it can't lift up your heart, you, you seriously have got to start seeking some help. Right, exactly. Right? <laughs> yes. you know, because you know, you know. If, if you were afraid of being alone, and you know, many people are, we're not taught to be alone. No, we're pack people. Right. And if though I think those people did suffer yep. because of the pandemic, but you know, that's, that's why God created zoom. Yes. And, and we didn't really have to be isolated, but what, a, what an opportunity to go inside. And I, I really hope that some of those people that were afraid of self-discovery of, of being alone, reached out 
to the right people to learn how to go within because that's where the answers are. Yes. That's where you are. Yes. That's where you are. You're not out here. <sighs> that's the vessel. Right. Exactly. So hopefully that happened. But making sure that you're living in homeostasis, but also living balanced in other areas of your life is is really important because you know we're we're put here to be happy mm -hmm. we're put here to evolve to learn and be happy ultimately and so focus on that funny enough you i've got a show on joy this week <laughs> I have two shows on, on business talking completely about the corporate of investing in their people, you know, happy people working for you, more productivity, more enriched the company is going to be. That entire paradigm that is changing. The changes are happening. Yes. But, you know, we know Fox News is, you know, take a pimple and make it a volcanic eruption, right? If we stop buying that and, you know, after the last five years of hurricane from Mr. Orange, uh, when when it went back to boring politics, you know, people was just, I just didn't realize how tense I was. You know, how I feel I can breathe now. It's not another tweet of hate going out. And, you know, people are going, okay, you know, like, whew, that was heavy, that was intense. I don't want to go through that again. So I have to be more conscious what I put out there and what I respond to and how I feed another person because we've had enough, haven't we? Keep your hate rhetoric to yourself. We are just not interested anymore. No. And you know, Sarah, something that um, no matter where you live, you can, you can find the people that lift you up. Yes. You know, like like you, I I love talking to you. I I, I cherish oh, our you. conversations because you don't focus on the problem; you focus on the solution. Because Absolutely. you you make me feel good, and you are a light. And those those people are the ones that you want to be around. If there's if there's people that, and we all have those toxic people in our lives. Oh yeah. It's up to you to limit your exposure to them. Yes. You know, you really have to be in charge of setting boundaries because you could just as easily be pulled down as you can be lifted up. Yeah. You have to really make a conscious effort to be continue being lifted up by the books you read, by the mm -hmm. programs that you watch, by... Every podcast you listen to <laughs> yes yes and it's so important that you you don't dwell on that stuff because you know i, I have bad things pop in my head every now and then but mm -hmm. you know how manifestation goes what you think about comes about right and i truly believe that um and boy i put an end to them right away mm -hmm. but i've learned to do that yes you know, and there's people that worry about everything. Where does that get you? We, you already talked about that. It brings disease. Mm -hmm. And you, you look at the people in your family that are the sickest. Mm -hmm. Look at their attitudes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not like this is abracadabra stuff. This is scientific proof now yep. that it, it's no longer woo woo. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, and we've known this for a long, long time, but only certain people. Right. Only certain people have known. Now it's been proven scientifically by people like Greg Braden, like um, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And, uh, oh, what's the other one that is so into it is, um, I'll think of his name, but uh, Bruce Lipton. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they are proving scientifically that that dwelling on negative things makes you sick you you can choose not to yes yes well it's the um 
uh, he actually came a Molotto experiment, right. water experiment. Water, um, right. I, in, I interviewed a couple of times his, uh, you know, this picture always comes up You're in my show. Again. Again. Where I'd love to be, you know, that, <laughs> oh, they look at the water there and the trees and the breeze. Ah, oh, lovely. It'll go away in a moment. It's, <laughs> it's, it's my bucket list. But Thank anyway, we, we did a show um, with his uh, assistant because, you know, he died, Molotto died. But yes. the, the experiment of the water, for those that don't know, know it, is three rooms of water. One was uh, water was ignored, another one was given negativity, and another one positivity. The ignored one didn't change. The negative one literally turned dark. And uh, the light one actually turned into crystallization, which you can measure into a higher frequency. Well, we know that love vibration is a higher hertz and a higher frequency. We're over 70% water in our body. Yes. Now, if you're going to give it negativity all the time, that water is going to change. And that means what that water is, is surfacing is going to change as well. So it is up to us on how we look at something, you know, oh, the glass is half empty. No, it's always full. It's half full of something and the rest is air. It's always full of something. But you know what you don't want is full of crap. And right. that is your own inner attitude, you know. You know, we did that experiment with rice. You see yes. the rice one. And one we put in a room that was that nobody ever went into up on a high shelf. And one everybody walked by it and told it how beautiful it was and that we loved it. And the other one was far away from it too and said, you know, we hate you, you're ugly. And that one developed this black mold. Mm -hmm. The one that we said was so pretty and everything stayed pretty much the same, but it got this beautiful red color in mm. it. I don't know where that red color came from. And the one that was in that room by itself turned hideous. It was, it was so gross. Yeah. And, and that, so that's so true. And, you know, it's up to us how we're going to nurture ourselves. Right. Yes. Um, we have to fill ourselves up first before we can yes. give to other people. And yes. it's not selfish. No, it's, it's imperative. Right. It is. That was, you know? We weren't taught that as women either. No. And, you know, both you and I, am, and bless you for your kind words. Um, you know, I may be light today, but boy, if I know darkness, have I known struggle, you know, yeah. and it, it doesn't it make you appreciate the lightness more. It, it, it makes me want to focus on the lightness more because I don't have, you know, at my age, I haven't got the strength to carry any of that other stuff anymore. You know, or that pain anymore. It was, it's gone. It's in the past. It made me the woman I am today. Um, I discovered my strength, my courage, my abilities, and I learned to stand tall in my own life as enough. I'm Sarah, I'm enough as Sarah, I'm not trying to be anyone else. A long journey to get there, but it is a conscious choice. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it, where got your darkness is right now, I promise you, I've been down the rabbit hole. I have thought of su suicide. I have wanted just to curl up and die. I know those feelings oh so well, uh, yet it, I've fought through it with various means, various help. and. Uh, who I am today and the joy that I live in today is absolutely real because I earned it because I chose it and I nurture it just like mm -hmm. you and we all have to do that yes right yeah it, it, you know it's not just the switch light bulb I'm not going to be this we we have to get rid of the garbage right and you know we were talking about um this month in uh my body mind spirit we had a We've had a three month challenge and we um, compared it to gardening where we had to prepare our soil, then we had to pick our seeds, then we had to plant our seeds and we did that um, as companion gardening because some seeds can grow together and protect and mm -hmm. nurture each other and some can't. But some like, like if you're working on your health, you can incorporate walking every day and eating well mm -hmm. you know those are companions and this month we're talking about establishing roots mm -hmm. so in order to create a ritual you have to purposely focus on it it's where we give our attention yes so if you pick intent you know if you only do this every month every month you pick a positive thing to focus on 
and it can be your body it can be your spirit it can be whatever you know it can be to read three books yeah. a month you know it can be to walk every day for a half an hour it doesn't really matter what it is as long as the, it's good for you and it's going to help you reach where you want to be ideally in your life and this this month we're calling it um um taking root i had to look so it's all about how you have to really focus on that intention in order for it to grow and actually become a habit yeah which in 66 days then becomes a ritual because it becomes part of you yes and boy if you did that just on one thing a year for 12 months at the end of that year think of the person that you yes. would be. i mean it's baby wow. steps you know, I mean, some people can leap and sometimes we can take that leap. But most of the time it's literally toe by toe by toe, right. which you grows into a foot, into a stride, you know? Yeah, right. it's just like... You can't go from self-loathing to self-love. Yeah, yes. You have to start appreciating yourself. And and was it you You and I talking about mirror work? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yes, I find that that is like the hardest thing yes. for me. You can't fool yourself. You no. can't pull the wool over your own eyes. And <laughs> Those eyes are looking back at going, really? <laughs> yeah. Today I was reading for five days. It was, um, oh, I can't think of her name. Mel something. Um, she said, every, every morning for five days, give yourself a high five in the mirror and tell yourself something good. Yeah. So maybe that's going to be a better way for, for me to start because you know how when you can't do something, how you just, well, I can't it do off. it, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. So yeah. maybe that high five will help me reach the point where I can actually stand in front of the mirror. I, and why? I don't know why it's so hard for me. Because you've been conditioned by others i mean also it was vain for us to look in the mirror exactly. too long right that's what i've always thought people yeah. that look in the mirror are conceited yes and then yes. the other thing is well you don't look like so and so so you you know you look must look like a dog you know yes. <laughs> but i'm a cute fluffy dog <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got to change it we've got to bring some humor into it right. are you we are never going to live up to other people's expectation and nor are we meant to Right. We've got to embrace our own beautiful, glorious flawsomeness. Right? And because that makes us your own expectations. Yes. And make sure it's a realistic expectation. Right? And and allow, 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 allow things to guide you, to nurture you, to show you the way. Do not dictate it. Right. Oh, that's a big mistake. <laughs> big mistake. I want yeah. to be here by such and such. No, you're not allowing. You're not going into the process and being vulnerable and surrendering which is what you need to do um you are dictating and it's for as long as you hold on to that control you're never going to get into that inside this and that's the masculine spirit. isn't it yeah it is holding on to that and yeah. just allowing is the feminine mm -hmm. yeah so um but it also has been well that's too woo woo no it is not woo woo at all. It's common sense when you look at it. If we try and hold on to something so tight, you know, we're going to get rope burn. All right. So if we know that, okay, maybe I'm not, I can either hook this rope up against a tree or something else that can hold on to it for me if I need that boat, or maybe I just simply need to let that boat go. All right. It's, is, yeah, but what if I need it down the road? Don't what if? Yes, yes, but, 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 no, but is a foot to sit on. <laughs> right so the, it does require a, a lot of work but it gets to that point where it is no longer work it's a part of your life just be willing to do it like you need anything that you're going to learn right right be willing to learn yes let's yes. talk let's talk about your book oh thank you okay so so I used, have, um, I used to have a radio show called uh the devolution show and that has it was all everything was all based on my book but i've chosen to go down a different path because even though the path i was going on i wanted to be like this one i misnamed it mm -hmm. you know so um 
And my son told me that right from the beginning. I should have listened, but <laughs> that's the way it goes. But my book was not misnamed. Um, it's called Devolution, The Evolution and Revolution of the Diva. And what it's about is um, it's true stories in there. Mm -hmm. And the stories all taught me something. And there's places in there for you to write about what that story can teach you. Or maybe you learn the same lesson, but in a different way. Right. And the whole goal of it was to get you thinking about your own life and the things that happened and what you learned from them. So instead of focusing on the problem that your parents were alcoholics. Right. Focus on the fact that you don't drink and you are all for sobriety and you've helped a bunch of people overcome their drinking problems. I mean, you know, it's not that that's you, but I'm just saying if, right. Whatever again, it is for you. change the way you look at things. So it's all about making you take a look at your own life, the things that you learned and why you learn them and how they serve you. Yes. Be the diva. You're yes. a divine inspiration, right? That is visionary, and um, and you're aspirating. You know the desires. It's like when we look at the word diva as somebody being difficult and full of themselves. And no, right. you know, it's our divine presence. Be that diva in your own life. It means you're owning your life. You're celebrating your life. You're allowing your life to be. We're meant to be glorious. We're meant to be beautiful human beings that shine bright. Right. Right. And you know without shame or embarrassment. Right, you know, and without without the need of conceit or ego. It's just a question your light is meant to shine bright to show the way for others. And that's simply what it's there for. And so many people say that in so many different ways. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. Can I can I read something to you real please, quick? Please, please. Okay. Does a woman have to be a bitch to experience a devolution? Absolutely not. Quite the opposite is true. The devolution is all about women coming together. It is a personal experience and a group endeavor. You must experience the evolution before you can join the revolution. Mm -hmm. Bitchiness must be put aside, unless in extreme circumstances or <laughs> under personal duress. Start with the woman in the mirror. Look at her. She may appear the bitch at first glance, but once you see her eyes and hear her laugh, you'll know she's part of the devolution. Mm. That's such a poignant point there is looking at ourselves as, as the bitch or the this or the that. Um, and it's like, let's take that guard down. Let's, you know, let's make fun of ourselves. Let's, let's just give ourselves some heart. And then we realize, you know, that diva is begging to come out. Um, and, you know, this whole bitchiness is, is a, a self-protection. Yes. It's on guard. And it's like, what do you feel you need to be on guard for? And, you know, talking about the people that like to piranha those that are in their own self-discovery, that's why it's very, very important that you're only around people that are there to, to nurture you. Um, the higher the frequency, the higher the evolution that you take, the more you are into self-love. And in that self-love, you can't knowingly do harm to anyone else mm -hmm. because it's against your very grain, but you also are inviting other people in that vibration or who want to be around that vibration. And quantum physics has been wonderful because it's allowed scientists to measure those that are living on a spiritual realm and to actually understand they're living at that higher frequency. Right, right. So they understand that spirituality isn't woo-woo and ha-ha and kumbaya. It is a state of energy, a state of frequency and beingness that is of a higher plane. And we are all capable of getting there. Exactly. And if you don't believe in vibrations, mm -hmm. Think about, put yourself at a party mm -hmm. and someone walks in the door and they're all, and they just walk over and get a drink and hard, hi. You don't pay any attention to that person, do you? But no. if someone walks in, hi, oh, I'm so happy to see you. That's vibration. Yeah. And you can't deny it. No, you want to be around that person because mm -hmm. they lift you up. You want to get into that vibe. It's a dance all of its own. 
right? We want to be around those people. Why do we look at such inspirational speakers like Wayne Dreyer, you know, and many others? It's because they have that gift of not only yeah. speaking reality to us, but showing us how we can lift ourselves up out of the, the doom and the gloom and, and show us how we can move forward into that beautiful higher vibration. Right. You know, they're not just saying, just do this and it's all going to be fine. <laughs> they're saying, look, I struggled. And the right. best teachers, the best teachers are those that have struggled before you and they've gone through that process and now they have the skills, the tools and the wisdom to help you through it, just like yes. yourself. Yes, very good. That's the truth. It is the truth. It mm -hmm. is the truth. And, and I think humor has to come into it, right? Because, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm dyslexic and I'm always saying things the wrong way around or I make up words and my kids just rig me to death, right? But it's all in love. You know, they know this is mum, you know, who makes up words, etc. cetera. Um, <laughs> who's goofy, right? But, you know, but that is also, the, you know, is part of my spirit. Yes. And I know them making fun of me is not to belittle me or anything. It's to join in with me. Right. right? And, and because they love you so dearly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I have to say, like, this weekend, I'm, I'm going down to see my grandson again. And I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. And last weekend, he actually went to meet his uncle and his grandfather because they're over on the mainland. And my son sent a video of him talking baby talk to him and him doing the bubble laugh, you know, that, uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, cooey, cooey, cooey in the little bubbles. And yeah. he's at that stage now. And I can't wait to get there and have some bubble talk. <laughs> right. I was with my grandson last week. He is um, nine months old. Mm. And oh my gosh, we had so much fun. He, yes. Oh, just so much fun. Yeah, that's precious. If we look at the little evolution of a, of a baby, of a child, how quickly things change from week to week. And we see them just, yeah, you know, they're crying for food, you know, um, sleep, this, that, etc. But they just are such joyful creatures. And so many simple things make them happy. Yes. And how it lifts up our heart and our own spirit when we're around them. Yes. And it reminds us of the joy in life. It's like, why am I taking life so seriously? Why am I They're letting it saying, pull me down? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much joy to be had yes. oh, there's somebody up on the roof over there i hope he doesn't fall off oh <laughs> oh he's a, a sweeper okay oh, good. must be okay. used to this yes okay. yes <laughs> yes i don't like roof walkers uh, no 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 <laughs> ken is a little yeah but he's a, he's a chimney sweeper so okay oh good yeah, he okay. knows he knows what he's doing we hope so <laughs> Um, we are always going to have some bad news and there's always going to be something out there that that isn't good. Um, you know, one of the things I have a pet peeve of Emmy um, Armageddon movies is that there's no electricity, there's no power, uh, there's no internet, there's no nothing. And I thought, hang on, those infrastructures are all still in place. Oh, yes. right. Why can't we just reignite them? Do we what? have the brain power? You've got all the stuff there. Why can't you switch the damn I've thing back on? That, and I and I don't understand why everybody lives in such doom and gloom and darkness when it's like when you did it once before, why can't you do it again? Right. Even if it's tapping into it just locally. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me at all. Mm -mm. You know, it's uh I never even thought of that. You know, we go back to the, you know, to the stone ages instead of kind of like, okay, you know, how do we put this back on? Mm -hmm. And, you know, get the manpower together. This is our survival. Let's come together to make this happen. And Unless generate there are zombies out there waiting to get you while you're trying to work. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm a Walking Dead fan. <laughs> and it's not because of the zombies. It is what people will do to the extent of survival. Ah. And I, for me, from a psychological point of view, I'm always completely fascinated ah. where you take somebody that's very weak and timid, and this has made them extremely strong and a leader. And then you take other people who were, you know, dweebs and now have stepped into power and, right. and brutality. And it's like, again, what makes us make those choices? Because let's face it, whatever road you're going down is a choice. No, we, yes. we can't always choose what happens to us, but we can choose how we react. Right. right. But most of the time we're choosing our road. Why do we choose that road? What is it in us that keeps choosing that road? Yeah, there are other ones. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> you don't have to keep going down the same cold sack. It's not taking you anywhere. <laughs> No. So you have all these wonderful programs. You do them monthly. Yes, um, within uh, my membership site, my Body, Mind, Spirit, we do a monthly membership. Now that we've had um, three months in a row that were garden themed, and next month, two, yeah, three. Next month, it's time to bloom. So it's it's um, actually seeing some fruits of that groundwork literally that we put in and then the week after the month after that it's um time to pick the fruit or i haven't named it yet but time. now how you've changed you yeah. know you set the intention four months ago did you follow through mm -hmm. did you plant those seeds did you nourish them did they take root because of the way you nourish them and if not you can start all over again, show yourself some compassion. And yeah. isn't that something that we show women show to everybody else? Yes. Equally, and yet we're so hard on ourselves. So that's something else that, that we have to learn. And that's within the challenge too. And the one after that is going to be getting in touch with our divine feminine mm. because in our book of the month is going to be um, the warrior goddess. What is the name of that book? Yeah. Warrior Goddess Training. That's going to be our book of the month for our book club. Can so, people go back if, they've, if they're just hearing about you now? Can they go back and take the other courses or do they have to wait until next year or can they join midway? Well, we, we've been talking about that. My web developer who just had a baby today, congratulations. Oh, wow, wonderful. Um, uh, we've been talking about that. What we decided to do was to turn them into a program and put them on the website. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be recording those within the next couple of weeks here so that you can take one, two, and three in that sequence. Right. So that you can get caught up or take them whenever you want. You don't have to be there live. You right. can just take them as they, as, um, and then and people you know, could catch up and then join into the current one once they've right. caught up. Right. right. Yeah. Again, what you're doing is you're pacing people. You know, this is what you're going to do every month and how much time you give it and, and what intent you give it, what energy you give it, it will be the results and how well you do in the next month. And you're not saying to you, oh, 30 days, we're going to have you all, blah, 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 blah. No, it's not about that. You know, some people do take longer to get out the gate. Yeah. Um, some people do take longer to kind of get it. And then suddenly there's a light bulb epiphany and then they can really propel forward. But each to our own time as long as we're not giving up and we're continuing to move forward and then that comes to the camaraderie yes. of others around you of supporting you there's been you know i remember back in early 2000s when i said to everybody i'm sorry i can't be there for you right now i need to be there for myself and how people walked away from me because i could no longer be there for them and it's like okay fine that's fine that's your choice you're obviously not meant to be a part of my future right right, right. and i needed to take that time for myself otherwise i was not going to survive and we have to look at that and if people yeah. walk away from you that just means they're at the end of that chapter they're not meant to right. be in the next chapter because they're not going down the same path as you okay. right and that's and okay. Some people, it takes a little longer because they have so their soil isn't ready. To yeah. Plant seeds. yeah. And they have to really work on getting rid of um, all that, all the stones in the yeah. dirt and, and get their pH balanced yeah. and, and prepare that soil for what they want. The, the thing is, no matter where you are, you can start from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all, as far as I know, want to be the best version of ourselves. Yeah. I've never once heard somebody say, gosh, I wish I was nasty. I've never <laughs> heard anybody say that before. And so we all want to be the best versions of ourselves. And, you know, if you aren't seeing yourself in that light, mm -hmm. then you're not presenting like that. Right. If you're not working on being that person that you aspire to be, then you're stuck. Yeah. And 
if that's fine if you if you are happy there you know i don't put anybody down that doesn't do self work right. you know if you're if that's how you're happy then that's that's the course you're supposed to be on right and good for you you know just like your political background doesn't matter to me nor right. does your religious background what matters to me is the way you treat me and the way you treat others right and the way you treat yourself the way you treat yourself really speaks to how you treat others mm -hmm. you know and so if I, you're in that negative self talk yeah. you know when, I, when i'm coaching with somebody one of the first exercises i give them is a negative self talk exercise and they have to write down everything that they say to themselves negatively for three days now some people will come back with two repetitive things that they keep saying some will come back with five legal sheets on both sides, you know, and it doesn't matter. That's where you start. You start yes. changing that first because that's your subconscious telling yeah. you that you're not worthy, that you're, you're not pretty enough, that you're not. And where did that come from? That come, came from learned memes that, yes. that you were taught growing up that, but you got to start. Yes. You got to start from somewhere and that's where you start. You, yeah, you it's all the exterior, yeah. exterior thing that has molded you into who you are. Uh, it's time to let the interior come out. Exactly. The right. name of my coaching practice is Strength From Within Training. Mm. Because that's where it all is. Yes. That's where all the answers are. Right. But we're, nobody told you to sit down and meditate for a half an hour. And then you'll get the answer that you're looking for. Right. Right. And, and you've got to, again, as I said, have the open heart because that, that divine spiritual presence cannot speak to you through a closed heart. And, you know, the first thing that has to happen is your mindset. Your mind yeah. has to be willing to go down this journey and surrender because our mind is full of data. And, and if we keep going, yes, but, but whatever, but whatever, but whatever. And we just step out of that and go into the heart and soul intellect. Right and right. trust that it will guide us again it's it the soul speaks to the heart in truth that goes to the spirit into action and the mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it don't and just trust that trust yeah. that is the truth that is the divine core truth yes right the head will know what it needs to know we've got a huge database in here and we're just treadmilling all the time but yes but I, you know question 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 well you want that question answered listen to the soul heart and spirit right. But we don't take time. No. 90,000, 60 to 90,000 thoughts race through our minds a day. And over 80% of them are negative and repetitious. Yes. What does that say? Yeah. That says that you have, you're not controlling your mind. Mm -hmm. And your mind is controlling your body. So that means you're not control. You are out you're of control. You're not in control. <laughs> <laughs> You've so lost control. It's a choice you have to take to to take a, a, a stand on what you're going to think about and where yeah. you're going to let those thoughts dwell. Right. You can't reprogram your subconscious if your conscious is too busy thinking about everything that's wrong. And, you know, and um, you have to stop at the store and get milk on the way home and that you need gas. And, <laughs> you know, you've got to really calm that mind down to reprogram your subconscious. And if you're willing to step into the gratitude and the joy, and you keep feeding that, keep feeding that, you know, um, I've always said it takes eight positives to undo one negative. And, you know, the old elastic band thing, yes. the negative four, and you associate the negative with pain. And then you affirm eight times after something positive, which could be yes. a gratitude or joy, or a, you know, a feeling. Uh, and what you're doing is reprogramming your mind to accept the joy, to accept it, to go there first. Then those 60,000 thoughts that you're having a day are going to be on a more positive vibration. And that can be a seed that you plant. And if you consciously put effort into that intention, it yep. will eventually become a habit, which will become a ritual, which then you will be considered a positive thinker focused on solutions and not problems. And isn't that a much better way place to dwell and a much better way to use our brains? To use our entire beingness. Yes. You know, we become that light. We become that joy. We just become the inspiration begets invitation. So yes. when people are inspired by who you are, you're inviting them to take the journey that's going to get them to that joy place, to that meaningful purpose place. 
I love interviewing people that have been willing to take the journey and that have gone through the process and now taking all that they've learned and putting it in a format to pass it back on. Because that is, I think, the greatest gift you can receive. You know, that somebody else, I relate to you, I understand, I know what you're going yeah. through. Uh, these are the processes that work for me, right? Apply them to yourself. You may tweak them, you may change them, but the principle right. is there. And right. it will lead you to where I am in your own light. It will lead you to where I am, which is in a place where I'm very happy to be me. Right. Yes. And when you can honestly say that. Yeah. Oh, what a blessing that is. It's such a weight off the shoulders. Yes. It really is. It's that, you know, I know I'm quirky. I know I'm weird right. to many people. And it's like, fine, I'm happy right. to be that. Right. You know, I no longer beat myself up for what I'm not. I am what I am. And, you know, I would say I'm either your cup of tea or I'm somebody's strong cup of black coffee. <laughs> you know, it's if I'm not your cup of tea, that's fine. I'm not going to be offended. You're both to me. <laughs> I like both. <laughs> the point is, we like to to um, attract people you know who are on the same vibe, and that's why you and I hit it off right right away. We we're on the same vibration, and in that vibration, it doesn't matter even what our words that we've said today. The sheer vibration has already reached people, right? That sheer love vibration of caringness and and just you know, really that willingness to, to, to set people on their right path into yes. being their own beautiful awesomeness. And um, it is a wonderful gift to do, you know, to be. And, you know, I'm, thank you for taking that journey yourself. You know, thank you for taking everything that you've been through and then putting it out in, in a beautiful platform, you know, of the simple, the garden, because everybody's looking at the harvest. Or, you know, or, or tugging away at the roots and it's no, everything will grow in its own time. All you're responsible for is the watering and the nurturing and making sure the weeds don't take over. Yes. You got to pull those weeds. Mm -hmm. Now they will consume your plant. <laughs> and and best, they're best pulled small. Sorry? They're best pulled when they're small. The weeds? Yes. Right. Yeah, Bill, you don't let them get out of control. <laughs> No, no, no. Don't all of a sudden, oh, God, I've got a whole garden of weeds. Where's the flowers? No, you don't want that. Stitch in time. Right? Yeah, it saves nine. So um, don't be afraid to address the issues. Uh, you know, it's, it's memories that kind of come up and you go, oh, my God, that happened to me in my childhood. I didn't realize that was so deep in my psyche that it's made, it's guided me on a lot of wrong decisions because of that pain. And it's not for you to go back into that pain. It's for you to release that pain. Exactly. exactly. To nurture that child and to say it's okay, uh, to let it go and so that they can move forward. But we've got to be willing to participate in our own lives, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you can't fix what you're not aware of. Right. So when those things do come up, it's okay to dwell there for a little while. Yeah. And show yourself some compassion because you don't go cry. Not rise above it unless right. you are there and, and feel it. Yes. And you know what? Exactly what you said. You're not the only one that has ever gone through that, nor right. will there not be anybody else ever going through right. that. And you never know when that person's going to come and you will see that pain in their eyes mm. and that downtrodden look on their face and know more than anybody else that that they are experiencing what you already went through right yes and that sometimes it's just listening to them mm -hmm. and then then being able to say you know the you you are more than this this is i'm glad you've spoken about it that's the first step to your own recovery mm -hmm. and now let's look at these other steps we can take to releasing the pain right because we we don't want people it can be done in 30 days you've, you've got a whole in year program there yeah. all right and but it's, each it's each over. each month though is a progress mm -hmm. and each month is something you know it, but you're you're doing it at the roots you're doing it at the core so many people want to just address the surface problem mm -hmm. and don't go down to the core if you don't go down to the core that core is going to keep knocking at your door you have to get to the root of the problem yep 
And the more tools you have to work in that garden, mm -hmm. the better. Yes. Yes. And you know, sometimes the weather's going to be against you. Yes. Don't but take it personally. It won't matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, it's, I think another huge thing is just simply be kind to yourself. Yes. We're not very kind to ourselves, are we? We love to punish ourselves. And kindness is something I think we, that we, when we're in that state of being, is, is really hard. We're kind to everyone else, but we don't think we're worthy of being kind. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where you really have to look at, folks, is that you deserve kindness. You, you, what would you say to your best friend? Mm -hmm. Now look in the mirror right. as your best friend. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And not be so hard on yourself. That's yeah. The, yep. We've spoken many universal truths today. Yes. 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 And, and they are truths and they're all applicable and they're all applicable. Mm -hmm. And they all have excellent results. Mm -hmm. It's just a question. Are you willing to open up your heart and soul and spirit and take the journey? Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way you're going to get to this other side. Mm -hmm. The only way you're yep. going to actually understand what love and joy is all about, what solutions are all about and how to be there for one another. Right. Truly be there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not without any conditions. Yes. yes. Oh, no. Comparison, competitive and conditions. Bye bye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not interested in at all they're destructive so how do people get devolution book and also how do they get to your site and sign up and of course you're going to have this program in the next couple of weeks but if they're interested in it uh, from listening to the show you know how they, can they get on a list for it yes there's a bunch of different things that you can do um my whole goal is to touch as many people as i can uh, so if you want to become a member, you in, included in the membership is the monthly challenge. You can go to mybodymindspirit.com and sign up. And if you let me know, if you shoot me a message on Facebook or anywhere that you find me, Deborah St. Hilaire, shoot me a message that you found out about it from Sarah, I will give you a 25% discount. Beautiful. So Thank at you. At the end of the summer. So that's huge. But, you know, I want you, I want you to grow. I want you to evolve. I want you to be happy in your own skin. And I want you to show people how happy you are being in your own skin. Exactly. It's really, really important. Um, also, Strength From Within Training is my coaching website. And anytime you want to get a hold of me, you can send me an email to deb at mybodymindspirit.com. Uh, I'll send you a calendar invite. I do offer a session where we, I call them a, a solution based session for free mm. one. And um, we see if we can work together. Right. I, I take coaching clients uh, that, that resonate yeah. with me that I resonate with that I really feel like I can make a difference in their lives. And so very often they end up making such a big difference in mine. But that's the, yeah, that's yeah. the truth. So we can, you know, my whole theme is let's grow together. Yeah. Not grow apart. No. Let's grow together. Yeah. And my book you can find on Amazon, Devolution, The Evolution and Revolution of the Diva. But I just ordered a case of them. So if you would like an autographed copy, again, get a hold of me. I'll autograph it for you and get it in the mail. And Sarah, I, I so appreciate the time that we spend together more than I can even begin to tell you. You'll be back, my love. You'll be back. We will be doing this again for sure. Great. Um, you know, I love I love the way the, you know, your whole platform, you know, of the of the gardening, of the land. You know, just if people actually got out and kind of felt the soil. Oh, grounding. You know? That was big. We had yes. that whole thing. Yeah. Yet. And you gotta gotta stay grounded. And appreciation, folks appreciation and gratitude and when you know how things grow right from the soil uh, and you're watching it grow you know you you know may want to grow a vegetable and then when you get to eat it oh you know, yeah oh my god does it taste good <laughs> and you know? get to it at the epitome of ripeness yes and yes nothing like that right and the, and the, just the appreciation for for what you've accomplished but it's not just the fruit you've been growing it's you have been growing along with the fruit and just to see that change in yourself i think you always think hindsight is wonderful um because you can look back and you can go 
oh my God, look at who I used to be and look at who I am now mm -hmm. and how far I've come without even realizing it. Right. And pat yeah. yourself on the back. We earned it. Yes. You know, the gray has <laughs> all the stress in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and, it doesn't have to be hard. Yes, there's going to be stumbling blocks. Yes, there's going to be some spots in your life where it feels hard. But don't look upon that as being a failure or that I can't go on. It's just take that deep breath, reach out for more support. You can get through this. You've got it. You've got it. And, and you know, if you change that to wonder, yes, well, I wonder how I can get through this. Yes. It just changes everything. It just changes everything. There's always a, a solution. Always, 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 always. And we don't see it if we're in panic. Right. We only That's see right. it in clarity. Yes. Yeah. Thank so, you. Uh, so your sites again is my mind, body, my spirit. My body, mind, oh, Sorry, spirit. here's my dyslexia. Okay. <laughs> my body, my husband says it too, and he's just, so I, I'm used to it. <laughs> my body, mind, spirit dot com. Dot com and strength from within training dot com. And of course, on your Facebooks, it's my body, yeah, mind, right. spirit, and uh, and you're in on Instagram as well. And um, you, you know, this has been. And I'm everywhere. Right. You can me. Yeah. And and the fact that it's reach out, see if there is a connection. That's the first yeah. step. You know, uh, because there's got to be the right foot. You've got you know, right fit rather. You've got to be a people that kind of feel each other's vibe. Because yes. in that way, you know that you can actually spark each other, right? Exactly. So and that's the important thing. And uh, be willing, just be willing to take the journey one step at a time and allow yourself to grow, allow yourself to become, you know, don't put any heavy burden on yourself. I've got to do this by, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. No, just say, I am going to participate in my own healing, my own growth, and I'm willing to take the journey. And that already has changed your energy. Yes, you get to do it. We get to do it. We get yes. to. It's our choice. It's our choice. What a great gift. It's our choice. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful having you here, Deborah. We'll certainly have you back again, most Thank certainly. You. It's been an absolute delight. And folks, um, really, she's here to help you. And, mm -hmm. and it's such a beautiful way. And you can just see your harvest grow down the road. And, and when you look back on each month, you go, my goodness, how far I've come and how I can use this entire metaphor in every aspect of my life and and just how it can be a part of my solution so that I can achieve what I want to achieve in life, which is meaningful purpose and to be of service to another. So thank you, Deborah, and to everyone else out there. Remember, it's up to you. Make the right choice. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.